Hello everybody, incarceration time is tough, it's not easy, but at the same time it's not that difficult like everybody think. If we have hope, faith, and a courage to change the way we think, I believe nothing is impossible. We can overcome that. As with my situation, I was facing up to like 40 years in prison because of my cybercrime. And to be honest, I was a very bad person. I was hurting and harming so many people's lives in America by stealing their identities and then resale it on a dark web. So long story short about my life, about what had changed me and why I become this person right now at this moment. And if we look at this way, we are own prisoner of the earth. And the earth is, is a, a big prison. You know, technically, if we look at that way, then everything will be fine. Either you in a real prison, or in outside in the free world. But to understand the true freedom is about the mind. How you can get the soul or the spirit get along with your body. Then that at that time, I believe you can overcome everything. You will be so grateful about life and be appreciated for everything. Because just to think that many people get lost even in the, in the uh, outside field some point because they sometimes they, they live but they not really live because they, they lost the connection between their soul and the body. I mean the, the spirit in the body, you know. As with the, the, the Bible, uh, one of the, the verse in the Bible is saying that as a body without a spirit is dead, and faith without this is dead also. So, um, to tell you guys about my story, is um, it's, it got started when I got arrested in February 7, 2013. Man, on that day, it was a nightmare for me. It, it was tough. It's different culture and different the even even everything the environment and the people. I was so stressed and depressed. At some point, I was trying to hang myself, try to finish everything, try to get over with, because it got so much. I mean, so much stress. Got really tired. Then I still got a little faith that it had me out. Um, because of the love that I have for my parents and my loved ones, you know, I don't want them to, you know, go into um, things that even worse uh, than be seeing me get locked up. So I just have to accept uh, the moment. I have to accept that. Okay, I'm in jail right now. So what I can do? Um, so. I started to get in myself into any positive activities in prison, try to get better myself and at the same time try to support the US government as much as possible to my knowledge, my skill, my experience uh, in cybercrime activity. And you know, it helped me a lot until my sentencing day around like uh, July 2015. I don't, I don't remember exactly the day, but on that day I was happy and also I was depressed because, uh, you know, I will face uh, the time uh, that I, I have to serve in prison. So, um, I was happy because I will, like, be, I will not be able to uh, uh, face the unknown anymore. I think that will be the toughest things in life, you know, to face the unknown. So uh, when the judge uh, uh, put a hammer and to say that I will have a 30 year sentence instead of 15 year sentence uh, based on the prosecutor uh, recommendation and I, I'm so grateful for all that. Especially on that day, my god grandmother Midnight, who is a jail teacher, she is a wonderful old lady. 
she have a good heart and, and always carry in um, with um, positive energy and I can tell that she is a compassionate person. I wish there is a bigger word to, you know, to tell about her character. Along her, uh, along with her, uh, is uh, my sister and also other American friends. And they also there uh, to show up and support me. So um, I was grateful and appreciate for um, all their support. Um, but however, I got back to uh, the jail. I was crying, you know, like a baby. <laughs> you know, and at, at, at such a young age, and and you. You face a very uh, traumatic uh, moment like like that, you know, to face like thirteen years in prison. It was difficult, but I will tell you guys why I overcome that. And on that day, go back to the jail. My godmother. Uh, she very kind and she saw up and she gave me a um, very positive message. She got so much faith on me. She told me, no matter what happened today, I have to get up, rest up, stand up, and never give up. So I told her, I don't want to lose her faith and I don't, and I don't want to disappoint her. And I from that now on, I keep going. I mean, keep getting better each day. Try to do whatever things in prison, any possible things you can name up, like getting a job in canteen, in um, kitchen, or I even joined in, into like many educational programs. You know, try to bring down my sentence and at the same time try to learn as much as possible you know so from the day I got sentenced to September the 3rd 2019 and September the 3rd 2019 it wasn't my release day but the day I understand deeply about life, about love, and especially what is true freedom. The true freedom that I told you guys um, in the, um, I mean, in the first minutes of this uh, um, speech. So, you know, um, on that day, I was feeling something strange going on. I think like I, I still hide something, you know, inside my inside myself. I, I still need to open it up and, and, and get it out. So I think all my life I have done so many bad things. I also lie to so many people around me. Not only my myself but also to my loved ones to my girlfriend and to many people around me. So I told myself, this, this is the day I will be honest everything. So I, I was be able to be honest and, and open up my mind and have a good will. I confess all my wrongdoings to the apple by kneeling down to the crowd and you know I was crying like a baby and I was feeling free completely free even I I was still in jail behind the bars and that day I call my second birthday. The days I will always celebrate because I am reborn again with a new spirit, a new show, but in the same body. Because 
Lies is all about love at the end of the day. It's all about being honest to ourselves. Every little thing, every little mistake that I have done in the past, you know, I confess all that. And it started from there, from that time. Everything, every good thing, it should happen to me from that day. September the 3rd, 2019. And then I got a good news. I will get an immediate lease from, pre uh, from prison on November. I remember the day, the, the 20th of November, 2019. And I was shocking. I was like, I got no word to say. I just, I couldn't cry or couldn't laugh or, you know, it just so surprised. Then I call my loved ones immediately to tell them the good news, and everybody was so happy. Uh, even my god grandmother made that. I mean, they so happy, and I've you know I was blessed. Then I told myself I will do whatever I can. Whatever I had written down in my journals, I want to do everything because those are all the good things and I want to be able to um, achieve on that, to give back to the society. So I bring all my journal during my uh, incarceration time back home in Vietnam. Um, I got back to Vietnam around August 2020. Um, got back to Vietnam. I think I have a good passion. But the thing is, I was lucky enough uh, understanding and knowledge. That's why I got into so many troubles. I mean, a computer and science is a good passion. But I use it in a wrong way. That's why I got punished. And I deserve it. There's no doubt. Then I think a, a person, when they have a passion, they have to understand what they do. Understand the true meaning in life of that person. I believe everybody had a destiny and we all have a different gifts and talents to uh, give to the world. You know, we all have a meaning to live. So before I got released, you know, like I talked to uh, a correctional officer and she, uh, she told me that uh, she lost her identity and um, her Reddit looked bad. You know, she couldn't uh, get along or get a call. And it just made me feeling like a serial killer, you know, because I told her that I, I was that kind of person before. And I wish I can train on that. And I, I asked her if I can give her some uh, cyber security advice, like uh, having a stronger password or uh, with a two step authentication. Um, at the same time, always uh, monitor uh, the credit report. Um, whenever possible to find out any suspicious activities and call uh, the authority immediately if you know you find any uh, thin strains going on with your credit report or your credit card and so I, I wrote that on that in my journal to remind me and when I got home I, I look at my journal again and then I think that's the, 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 the best way I can do to uh, help the people is to raise uh, cyber security awareness to all the uh, general population who are using uh, the internet daily so they can uh, avoid phishing and scamming. Um, you know, then when I got home, uh, I spent like uh, a few months with my loved ones before I got a job uh, at, a, at a government agency. Then I also co-founder 
uh, some of the non-profit organization to raise cyber security awareness also um, we provide free service to protect people from phishing and scamming website and then at the same time to um, um, uh, teach the, the, the kids um, and their parents to avoid like online harassment and cyberbully and something like that and and you know I believe we all have a choice and we all have a second chance it's all up to us and everybody got a passion and we should use our passion in the right way it's, I mean, life is on about perception. If we can change the way we think, then we can see the good in things. Everything have a two ways of thinking, you know, I believe that. So, there is only a light at the end of the tunnel for us. It's waiting for us at the end. So, we have to be able to have um, a willing and open my open our mind and to see that life is always there for us and I hope that um, to my story it can inspire you to stay positive and, and stay healthy during this uh, pandemic and nothing is impossible never give up thank you